my master queens today i am back with another video and we're gonna be talking about the five signs that you might be a codependent now i started going to therapy back in april and i learned that i was a codependent i just had to rock with it and say okay tell me what you know what a codependent is i got a little definition right here because I don't remember what exactly it said word for word. So I'm going to just read what it say codependency is. It says codependency is a learned behavior that can be passed down from generation to another. It is an emotional and behavioral condition that affects an individual's ability to have healthy, mutually satisfying relationships, also known as relationship addiction. And people with codependency often you know, form or maintain one-sided, emotionally destructive or abusive relationships. What's sign number one? Let's get into it. Number one is going to be you fear rocking the boat and you fear upsetting others. Let's sit back on that way. I did fear rocking the boat. I feared rocking the boat with friends, with family, with work i just fear rocking the boat that's just something i was like well i don't want to say anything so i'm going to avoid this at all costs that was just me but what did i learn is that i learned this from growing up not having a voice not being able to speak up for myself these are situations where as a child I didn't really have a sense of self, so I will always isolate myself. I grew up in a family where there was no communication, like as in talking about arguments or disagreements. None of that was discussed. It was just like, the next day you see them, what's up, what's up, what's up? Next minute we keep key key and then having a good time again. But there was never anything to where we were able to process those emotions if you grew up in a dysfunctional family then of course you can expect to see these show up in your life now this takes me to number two this this hit this hit okay so number two is you tend to obsess about pleasing others or having others please with you you're a people pleaser and being a people pleaser is something that i've done it definitely in work i would just if you need me to stay over an extra an extra hour or two and if you need me to do something for you and basically i would put their needs before mine i knew i was tired i knew that it was something that i really didn't want to do i knew that how it could take away from me and and instead of me just speaking up and saying oh no nah, like I, I can't do it or no i literally was just like yeah sure i'll do it what's up like come on let me let me do it for you like but nah that ain't me no more i ain't, i can't do it i've been working on saying no and flexing my power i'm good that's not something that i'm interested in i can't do it could tell you especially my mama because she would call me and say can you do this can you do that and i'm just like mom look there's google i love you i'm busy i can't do it i work 12 hours a day literally i, I don't be having no time for myself sometimes so for me to just set that up to where i say no Sometimes you just got to do it, you know? That's what I used to think. If I could just make everybody happy, everything would be all right. But you can't make everybody happy. You can't control people. You can't control how those people are feeling. It's just out of your control. So for you to be just going above and beyond and trying to people please all the time, you can just get burned out. Learn how to say no. All right, this takes me to number three. So you tend to overshare or overgive both emotionally, physically, spiritually and sometimes even financially once again growing up in a dysfunctional family my mama was always on the phone and then phone down shit and you keep telling everybody <laughs> everybody like literally me and my brother used to ask all the time yo why are you telling people what we just did you can't talk to us about what we just did tell us how we could do it better you know what i'm saying and i gotta show my mama this video before i even post it 
because literally like that's what she used to do <laughs> and i'm just sitting here thinking about it you was oversharing i found myself as i got older oversharing as telling people shit that they didn't even need to know and i'm questioning is like why am i doing this what what belief do i have to make me want to overshare information that doesn't even need to be said i just learned how to stop overextending myself stop oversharing and like i said who if you do this just work on it keep working keep working at it because it's not it's not easy it's not an easy road it's been something i've been working on before i even started therapy so y'all I just didn't know what it was called, but I was doing it in the work. Okay, let's get to number four. Four is going to be you easily lose yourself in other people's dramas, needs, and problems. Now, this is a big one. Once again, the relationships, it was one particular relationship that my mom had. And she would always just dump these problems and these issues onto me and... I just was like taking it in and taking it in and taking it in and one day I just said this don't feel good I said this does not feel good how do I take myself out of this situation how do I not carry that because it's so easy to absorb all of the negativity how do I shake that off it just made me realize how Allowing people to dump these problems and dramas and issues on me that I did not value myself. I didn't value my time. I didn't value my peace. I didn't value my energy. And then just one day it was like waking up and I said, you know what? Mm -mm, no more. So one of the days my mom called me talking about her relationship situation. Now this was an ongoing situation that she had. And one day I said, don't tell me anything else about him. Don't tell me nothing else. I do not want to hear it. And if you want to talk about anything else, I'm cool to talk about that. But other than that, I don't want to, I don't want him mentioned at all. Don't mention his name. I don't want to hear it. And from that day, she didn't understand then. But it got easier for her where she knew not to say anything to me about him. And that leads me to number five. Because right there is what I just did in number five. You know what I'm saying? So number five is you struggle with setting boundaries, sis, and you need to hold people accountable. Now, setting boundaries is not easy. And what I just explained to y'all is me setting that boundary with my mother where I told her not to tell me about her relationship problems anymore. So I'm gonna also give you another example where I set a boundary at the time I was dating this guy. He was late. He was late picking me up. He was supposed to pick me up about seven. He ain't, he ain't come. I'm looking. I'm like, time ticking. Where you at? And it just, it triggered me because I recall the time me being in high school and this guy was supposed to pick me up and it was no communication and he said nothing to me. But at the time, you know, I didn't know no better. Now I'm 26 years old. Well, at the time I was 25, but I'm 25 years old. And you hit me up. Normally, the old me would say, oh, it's fine. It's okay. You can still come. I'm desperate. You know, you can still come. But I, I, I need a date because I ain't been out in a minute. So, normally, the old me would be like, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? But the new me said, no, sir. No, thank you. You said you was going to be here by 7. You tell me you done fell asleep. You ain't set your alarm. You ain't set your alarm, sir. What's going on? You grown. What's the deal? You can't communicate that. You ain't tell me your ETA. You ain't told me nothing. So from there, I said, this cannot happen again. I said, I'm going to let it slide. But I would prefer you to communicate with me the next time that you're going to be late. And so from there, baby... I got the respect I deserve. You know what I'm saying? I got the respect I deserve. So literally, if y'all want the respect y'all deserve, you got to set them boundaries. If you don't, you just going to get walked all over. They just going to keep walking. Stumpy your ass. It just felt so good 
to set that boundary. And like I said, y'all, it's been a work in progress for me. I'm pretty sure that it's some people out here who don't know what a boundary is. I'm pretty sure there's some people out here who grew up in a dysfunctional family like I did and they don't go to therapy. So I just wanna be the one who get on here, talk about these issues and just be a voice for somebody who's trying to figure it out, but they don't know that they still need to work on themselves. And this is definitely a lot that I've had to work on within myself. Repressing my emotions and disregarding my own needs has been something that I've done for a while, even as an adult. And so this is just something that I'm just now learning. So I just felt the need to share. I look forward to continue to tell y'all what I'm learning in my therapy and how I'm growing on my journey. So I appreciate y'all for tuning in today. Thank you, my master queens. I ask that you leave me a comment. Let me know if you dealing with any repressed emotion. If you have any struggles with being a codependent, let me know down in the comments below. Cause girl, I feel you. I'm with you. <laughs> we going through this together. I'm, I'm, we, we going through this together, okay? Like this video. Let the people know that we, we working together. We gonna get through this. And we're going to have some real healthy relationships soon, okay? Thank you for watching today, and I'll see y'all queens in my next video. Peace.